touch technique for a simple wound dressing procedure. In this short video, we will look at the basic application of the aseptic non-touch technique in simple wound dressing care. At the end of this video, you will be able to describe the basic principles and application of aseptic non-touch technique in simple wound dressing and identifying key parts and key sites. There is no single way of performing aseptic non-touch technique. Practice and policy will vary with time, equipment use between hospitals and even within different areas of the hospital. So please follow the policy and guidelines in the area you are working when performing any procedure in clinical practice. Now, let's see the basic principles in aseptic non-touch technique. Healthcare-associated infection is the most common complication affecting patients in hospital. There are around 200,000 healthcare-associated infection in Australian acute healthcare facilities each year. Healthcare-associated infection cause unnecessary pain and suffering for patients and families. It may also prolong hospital stay and are costly to health system. The good news is, it is possible to prevent hospital-acquired infection. So, why septic non-touch technique? A septic non-touch technique is one of the techniques used to prevent contamination of key parts and key sites by microorganisms that could cause infection. Key parts are all of equipments in the clinical procedures that must remain sterile. The key parts for the wound care procedures are the tips of the forceps, the gauzes, sterile field, and internal part of the dressings. Key sites are sites that must be protected from the introduction of microorganisms. The key sites for the wound care procedure is the wound bed. Do not touch key parts and key sites. Touching means contaminating the areas which will introduce microorganisms and cause infection. During clinical procedure, health professionals should be able to identify key parts and key sites and protected them at all times to maintain a sepsis, which means condition that is free from infectious material. Now let us start the wound care. Please ensure that you properly inform the patient regarding the procedure and get the patient's consent. In this procedure, we will perform hand hygiene repeatedly. Effective hand hygiene is an important strategy in preventing healthcare associated infections. Wash your hands with water and soap if your hands are visibly soiled, or use alcohol based hand rub if your hands are clean. First, perform hand hygiene using alcohol based hand rub. After that, clean the trolley using the hospital grade clinical wipes. Gather your equipments. Ensure you get all equipments ready. Take time to analyze the wound chart or assess the wound itself properly, so you will have the plan to manage the wound. Open the wound dressing pack. Take care not to touch the inside of the area and arrange the content of the pack as needed. 
Touch only the base part of the forceps and keep the tips sterile. Prepare the solution to clean the wound and unpack the dressing product. When you're ready, bring all the equipment to bedside area. Do hand hygiene and put on your non-sterile gloves. Carefully take the old dressing off. off and dispose gloves and old dressing and do another hand hygiene. In this scenario, it is not necessary to put another clean gloves on because patient is not having any infection and the wound is small. Please put on fitted gloves, sterile or non-sterile, only when it is appropriate to do so. Clean the wound with normal saline. Again, make sure that you only touch the base of the forceps and keep the tips of the forceps sterile. Apply dressing using non-touch technique. Take care not to touch the key sides, which is the wound bed, and protect the key part, which is the inner side of the dressing. Gather all the used equipment and then dispose them to the bin. Do hand hygiene. Clean the trolley with sanitizing wipes and return it back to its position. You may return back unused equipment which were not open and all not contaminated. And the procedure with hand hygiene. It is important to protect key parts and key sites. Keep them sterile by not touching them. Performing hand hygiene before and after touching the patient and between procedures is also essential in preventing the spreading of infection. Remember, prevent infection, save lives. For more information, go to National Health and Medical Research Council website, ANTT website, or refer to your workplace policy and guideline. I hope you enjoy the video and learn something. Thank you for watching.